mucociliary clearance of the upper respiratory tract. Every higher organized form of life on Earth needs oxygen. The breath of life is indispensable to human beings. A normal day's breathing involves about 10 to 15,000 liters of air. Today, more than ever before, we are conscious of the value of clean air. But the air we breathe has never been absolutely clean, neither in early geological periods nor in the pre-industrial era. Pollen, spores and dust particles, as well as sandstorms and volcanic eruptions, all contribute to the pollution of the atmosphere. To prevent the trachea and bronchi from becoming choked with all the particles suspended in the air, the respiratory system has evolved an efficient cleaning mechanism. This now has to cope with additional man-made pollutants, which according to amount and chemical composition, present a new threat. The trachea, bronchial tubes and lungs of humans and animals are not always able to deal with this extra burden. The result is an aggravation of respiratory disorders with increasing age. But not only elderly people are involved. There is an increasing tendency for younger people and children to suffer from bronchial trouble. <coughs> Breathing difficulties deeply affect the daily lives of sufferers. Like this patient, who complains of difficulty in breathing, especially at night, which is not greatly helped even by inhalation. Among people in occupations, respiratory diseases take first place with a 25% incidence, followed by impairment of the supporting tissues and acute lesions caused by injury and poisoning. Besides human subjects, animals can also suffer from respiratory insufficiency. Horses are among the domestic animals most severely affected, distended nostrils and a pronounced appearance of the broken wind groove are sure signs of increased respiratory resistance. One of the causes can be a large accumulation of viscid mucus laden with particles of dirt which collects at the lower end of the trachea and in the bronchi as a result of an impaired clearance mechanism. Bronchoscopic evidence of the causes of such symptoms is particularly easy to obtain in horses on account of their anatomical structure, which enables observation deep into the primary bronchi. 
What does the respiratory tract clearance mechanism consist of? The coordinated action of fine cilia creates a current of mucus towards the mouth known as the mucociliary clearance mechanism. It has the effect of wafting surface particles in an uninterrupted movement to the exterior. In the human respiratory tract, a lawn consisting of some three billion cilia covers the surface of the trachea and bronchi. Each cilium is about 0.2 micrometers in thickness and 5 to 7 micrometers in length. It beats at a frequency of 15 to 20 times per second. Here is a lateral view. The cilia are cell membrane evaginations of the ciliated epithelium. About 200 of them project per cell from the tracheobronchial epithelium into the lumen. Mucus secreting goblet cells are distributed among the ciliated epithelium. Their sticky secretion is first held inside the cell in the premucin granules, which on moving towards the surface are converted into mucin. On reaching the luminal surface, the secretion flows together to form a layer of mucus. The small basal cells are still undifferentiated. They may develop into ciliated epithelium or goblet cells. They are responsible for the gradual regeneration of the epithelial surface. The submucosa contains mixed glands. Their mucus and serous wall cells produce the major proportion of the surface mucus. The serous and mucous contents of these glands are secreted into a system of channels where they become mixed. With the assistance of myoepithelium and ciliated excretory ducts, the mucus is transported to the surface where it is moved on by the action of the cilia. The ciliary movement cycle comprises the rapid stroke and the slower recovery with an intermediate resting phase. The mucus coating the cilia consists of two layers. The lower serous sol layer, into which the sharply bent cilia are submerged during the recovery phase, and above it, the viscous superficial gel layer. The tips of the cilia project into this layer for a brief period during the stroke phase and thus transport it for a short distance onwards. By the coordinated interplay of the beating cycles of an entire ciliary field, the mucous surface is maintained in rhythmically flowing movement. The sticky gel layer flows across the bubbles of alveolar surfactant over the almost stationary sol layer. The surfactant bubbles contain surface active substances which reduce the friction between the sol and gel layers and thus assist the work of the cilia. The cilia of neighbouring cells form a functional unit. Their beating periodicity is displaced so that a backward running wave motion is visible on the surface. This metachronal rhythm is also visible on the surface of the trachea almost free of mucus. It is made visible by reflected light. To make exact measurements of the efficiency of mucociliary clearance, the trachea and primary bronchi are dusted with graphite and then incubated in a humid chamber at body temperature. Mucus transport is visualized under the stereo microscope by means of the graphite particles and can be observed in vitro for an hour or two. The velocity of mucus transport increases cranially, in other words, the closer it gets from the lung to the larynx. This is shown by a comparison between a section of upper and lower tracheal tissue. The speed increases here by about 8% per centimeter.
the mucus does not move uniformly over the whole breadth of the trachea. In certain areas it forms faster moving transport paths with lateral transitions to slower moving areas or areas of complete immobility. The transportation paths remain for a while in a particular place before gradually changing their location. In this way, different longitudinal sections are cleared with varying intensity. Both smaller and larger particles, which are deposited in the trachea and bronchi during breathing, are often moved with equal speed. If the viscosity or thickness of the upper mucus layer decreases, the larger particles sink in further and are transported more slowly than smaller ones. With more drastic changes in the mucus composition, the particles finally remain where they are. The physiological interplay of stationary sol and mobile gel phases can also be simulated by the application of a mucus substitute. If the composition or viscosity of this mucus departs from the norm, the results are turbulence and particle aggregation. It is recommended to apply mucus substitute whenever the mucus secretion of the isolated organ diminishes and the mucus layer has been cleared by cilial action. This experimental setup is for quantification of toxic effects on mucus transport too. When cigarette smoke is passed over the trachea and bronchi, the mucus transport comes to an almost immediate halt and cannot regenerate. Pharmacological effects can also be demonstrated. If a secretolytic drug consisting of ethereal oils is injected intravenously before starting the experiment and the preparation is then subjected to cigarette smoke, mucus transport also comes to a halt. In the course of 10 to 15 minutes, it does, however, recover largely and mucus transport is resumed. By means of this experimental model, it was possible to demonstrate physiological and toxicological phenomena for the first time, as well as show the stimulating effects of certain ethereal oils from pines grown in the south of France on impaired mucus transport. Quantitative assessment of the mucociliary clearance rate allows us to recognize the potential hazards presented by other substances in the atmosphere. Sources of danger can then be addressed and effective countermeasures taken. But the mucociliary clearance mechanism evolved over hundred thousands of years can only protect us from permanent damage if the anthropogenic emissions of pollutants are returned to an acceptably low level.